Gentlemen and ladies, so let's move to the second session. The second session is national initiatives, and the session will be moderated by Dr. Solihin Manuri. Dr. Solihin Manuri is a senior advisor at Diametro Consulting based in Bogor, Indonesia. He has more than 15 years of experience in forestry in Indonesia. So Pak Solihin have 30 minutes for your session, over to you. Thank you, Mbak Sita. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Solihin Manuri. Uh, thanks for introduction, Mbak Sita. Uh, welcome to the second sessions about the subnational initiative. So previously we have uh, national to global uh, connections, now from national to subnational uh, uh, connections. So right now we have three uh, presenters, uh, resource persons from uh, quite broad uh, range of spectrum uh, from national level to site level and also from uh, yeah, government uh, ministerial and also from uh, NGO. So we have the first uh, resource person are Pak Joko Hendrato. He is the president director of Environmental Fund Management uh, Agency, or we call it BPDLH, Badan Pengelola Dana Lingkungan Hidup. He has a doctoral degree in uh, uh, management, uh, University of Indonesia. And the second uh, presenters, uh, we have uh, Pak Rudi Saf. He is a project manager at Warsi, uh, based in Jambi. He has a master degree in economic development. And yeah, he interestingly, uh, Warsi is not only uh, have uh, uh, activity or mitigation actions at uh, site level, but also they they just uh, currently uh, become one of the lembaga perantara or uh, the agency that will uh, help the BPDLH in distributing the, the fund. So that I think this is quite interesting uh, to understand how how this can be uh, implemented uh, uh, to the subnational level. And the last not uh, the least, we have uh, actually we uh, uh, in initially we are planning to uh, have Ibu Belinda uh, Margono. He is the director at uh, Directorat Inventarisasi dan Pemetaan Sumber Daya Hutan or IPSDH. But she has uh, another important event that she has to attend in Jogja, yeah, Bu Anna. But Bu Anna is uh, with us right now, Anna Tosiani. She is also well known. She is data analyst, uh, also at the same directorate. Uh, she has master degree of earth science uh, from double degree of UGM and uh, ITC uh, Netherlands. And he is, yeah, he, he is also one of a uh, team from Avril. So we we met quite often, also from uh, FRL National, BioCF, and also FCPF. So without further ado, uh, we, have, we only have 30 minutes. So I would uh, invite uh, Pak Joko, are you ready? Yeah, Pak Solihin. Yes, please, Pak Joko, uh, floor is yours. Pak Solihin, I'm sorry. Can I uh, uh, present it in Bahasa? Because oh, yeah, of, uh, sure. Sure, we can do it in Bahasa uh, Indonesia. Yeah, I Pak. Uh, that, uh, so we uh, describe it in Bahasa, I think. First of all, thank you very much that uh, uh, we invited in this uh, uh, <coughs> in, uh, dialogue. Bapak Ibu sekalian, saya hormatin uh, pertama-tama tentu uh, saya sangat Oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you uh, so much for having me, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to discuss with you. So, if I can have the assistance to uh, share my presentation, please. Yeah. Mungkin fokus yang ingin kami sampaikan di dalam kesempatan ini. So the focus or the theme that I would like to address in this focus, and I was informed by my team member Ibu Nia that in this uh, workshop, what we would like to know more is about mobilization of foreign funds and then linkages with carbon tax, linkages with the carbon economic value. 
judo. First of all, looking at the considering the uh, theme of this workshop, the role of science in the development of the AFRAL, I was quite um, unsure that uh, what should I bring to the table here. And hopefully my contribution uh, here can provide insights for our participants. Starting uh, from the issues that uh, we would like to discuss, I would also like to talk about the background of the Indonesian Environment um, Fund. And hopefully this can answer how do we mobilize foreign funds. There are several things that I would like to share in this forum. Um, first of all, we have Article 6 of the Paris Agreement that uh, requires carbon uh, transactions, carbon trade, carbon arrangements to involve or to have approval from the national government that is specified in Article 6 of Paris Agreement. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that is the information that we've had during the establishment period of the Indonesian Environment Fund. Secondly, I agree with Oswaldo uh, about carbon um, issues and that this is or carbon trading or carbon pricing is something that has a lot of uncertainties at this moment and uncertainty is of course something that um, capital owners want to avoid and in the first session we talk about a carbon issue that it, it is a cross-cutting issue it involves multiple stakeholders and we heard other uh, problems such as investment and we know that our state budget has constraints and so all of these uh, are in our consideration when the government offers this mechanism that eventually leads to the establishment of IEF or the Indonesian Environment Fund. Next slide, please. Jadi dalam diskusi ini kita akan jawab berikut ini. So in this presentation, I would like to answer the following: How is the institutional arrangement of the IEF in addressing carbon issue? Hopefully, we can explore about this question and what are the IEF's thematic and initial funds. So we'll, I'll tell you more about our funds and then the linkage of environmental and fund management and carbon pricing. So from this uh, question, I believe we'll uh, bring the discussion or summarize the discussion uh, nicely in this presentation. Next uh, slide. So the uh, background of IVF uh, was established because of the Article 6 of First Agreement, the cost-cutting issue of carbon pricing, the constraints in our state budget. We then thought of a strategy or solutions on and how to address uh, these problems. In short, we want to be able to attract the private sector to join our uh, funding or investment that we need to tackle environmental problems. So that's the overarching question. And I've mentioned that uncertainty for private sector is something that they would wish to avoid and it could impede their participation in environmental um, solutions. And it's something that we need to solve for them because we do want to involve uh, private sector. Article 6 on Paris Agreement is also uh, creates a certain pressure, not only for Indonesia, but for other countries around the world. That is about the role of governments, not only to uh, lead or to govern the economy, but uh, we also see consequences. And I believe that this is not unique to Indonesia, but also other countries around the world. And I also see this in Norwegia, Norway, for example, that when the government's role is involved, then they will issue the law on state finances and a law that we uh, have uh, from a long time ago that also still, uh, reflect the legacy governments of the uh, colonial government in the Netherlands. And so without uh, innovations, without breakthroughs, we will uh, meet with uh, problems uh, if we want to govern carbon uh, transactions. 
we now have the government regulation we saying that the carbon economic value we want to able to quantify uh, that value uh, however the rigidity of uh, public governance uh, should be an important consideration and i've mentioned about the constraints of the national state budget but uh, nevertheless state budget plays pivotal role to or in our efforts to tackle environmental issues. So the collaboration between the public funding and the private sector is a very important element in designing a mechanism. And because this is a cross-cutting issue and we have to consider uh, many variables, many things. So, all of the variables, if I may uh, use the term variable, the after that, the solution that we come up with is we offer a mechanism to provide an institution or to establish institution that can be a vehicle uh, to coordinate all of the relevant parties. Uh, the vehicle would want uh, wishes to be able to accommodate the interest of different stakeholders. And so that's why the vehicle needs to be very dynamic, uh, adaptable, and that is the idea behind the IEF's institutional arrangement. And if we consider to involve private sector, and it's very important that that involvement, that engagement has to be reflected in our laws and regulations. And these are the regulations that I bring in this presentation as the mandates or IEF that can reflect. But Joko, you have one more minute. So IEF is a public service agency or BLU that does not uh, strictly under the state uh, finances law. So we are a trustee. So as I said, we are a vehicle that follows the laws of regulations under the Financial Services Authority or OJK. Next, so this uh, law, this is the law 895 on capital market that we refer to. Next slide. And this is our mechanism. As a trustee, we manage all of funds separately from other uh, accounts from the state accounts we call them mandates and we put them or deposit them in a separate bank so between the ief as the manager and the bank as uh, the institution that stores the assets and there's always the line minister and program owner that is part of our project board. Uh, their role is to ensure that they are the users of our of IEF as the vehicle and that we can accommodate their interests and to be flexible enough to accommodate their needs. So that is the design of our legal or institutional mechanism. Next slide. So all of the funds in our IEF, we frame them, we uh, map them into five segments one is sustainable forest land use and ecosystem management renewable energy uh, low emission and all five you at, at the end of the day is wants to create environment and community resilience uh, right now we are managing red plus terra mangrove and in the instruments are grants Grants and revolving funds. Uh, we have revolving funds uh, from the environmental for environmental restoration, as well as reforestation. So we manage these uh, funds using the revolving fund instrument. We also have funds, disaster pooling fund, uh, under endowment fund instrument, and we also have other uh, instruments being designed in our pipeline. In including uh, vehicles or mechanism to issue green bonds. Next slide. So on the linkage of uh, environmental fund management and carbon pricing, uh, this is also under the law of the Minister of uh, Environmental and Forestry. So in our IEF, our mandate uh, again is under article 59 we should 
manage the uh, payments of carbon pricing, carbon levy. And I can share with you that the reason why we manage the uh, funds, why IEF manage the fund and not other institutions. And that's because the IEF is under the authority of the Minister of Finance, where um, instruments and capacities, the arrangements of corporations, everything, taxes are being monitored and managed by the Ministry of Finance and the capability of that ministry to reach out to all um, actors is the reason why IEF manages uh, carbon levy. And because there's a, a linkage with the taxation authority under the ministry. Next slide. We recently discussed about a ministerial regulation on carbon trading. This is the uh, chart that we try to uh, come up with. So we, you can see that there are multiple actors, multiple ministries, public institutions, and other institutions that based on Article 59, the article says that all transactions between all of these parties or the transactions are non-tax state revenue or PNBP. So how do we manage these, these payments uh, in flexible manner? That is where IEF comes in as we are the vehicle that manage the interests of these uh, different entities and that we do not need to follow the rigidity of the state finance law. And hopefully we can also share uh, the presentation later to our participants so that you can uh, see more closely on how we uh, arrange our the our carbon payments. And this is another scheme of the carbon uh, trading uh, using the result-based payment model and the mechanism that we have currently. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, uh, in this short time, can inspire our um, discussion. I look forward to your questions or comments. Uh, thank you. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Joko. Sangat menarik sekali. Sayangnya memang waktu kita sangat mepet. Tapi tadi banyak saya pikir. Thank you uh, so much, Pak Joko. I know that uh, we don't have a lot of time, but thank you so much for your very uh, comprehensive presentation. We shall move on to our other. Next speaker, we have Pak Rudi Shaf from Warsi in Jambi. Pak Rudi. Hello, Bang Rudi. Pak Rudi, are you ready to deliver your presentation? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, silakan, Bang. Yes, I am. So you may go ahead. You can use English or Bahasa Indonesia, whichever you're convenient. Baik, saya dalam bahasa Indonesia. Terima kasih yeah. banyak, Kang Solehin. Okay, so, I'll be delivering presentation in Bahasa Indonesia. Thank you so much, um, Solehin. And I'm here to talk about engaging community participation on Red Plus and the challenges. This is a little bit about Warsi. We were established in 1991, and we focus on facilitating local communities in uh, helping them in practicing sustainable forest uh, management methods uh, using their traditional knowledge and wisdoms. And we are present in several provinces in Indonesia, as you can see uh, from the map. On Red Plus, we know that this is the one of the solutions to address climate change and we believe that communities can play an important role in contributing to reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation. And what she sees the importance of recognizing tenure rights of communities. For example, like now we have the scheme of social forestry and it's a proven uh, a good scheme to show the community's capabilities of forest management. This is our uh, work 
uh, sites, our project uh, areas. We call this uh, community carbon uh, program in Bujang Rambah area in Bungo district that is in Jambi. Ada lima hutan desa dalam satu. So if you see this map, we have five uh, village forest in one landscape within a conservation forest and people the local people have received the recognition to manage the village uh, forest. So this is the model that we are developing. Essentially, people received recognition to manage community forestry under the scheme of village forest. And since this is a conservation forest, they also need to maintain uh, the forest so that it can assume the conservation forest roles and we are developing support so that local people can receive benefits from their efforts in protecting and guarding safeguarding the forest in initially we didn't go directly to the carbon scheme instead we built activities with the local people especially to safeguard to protect the forest to safeguard the forest to enrich the forest as well as to strengthen the local institutional capacity among the local communities so this is an uh, interesting illustration if you see the coverage forest coverage based on this map we can see that from 2013 to 2019, we did not experience any loss of forest coverage. In other words, zero deforestation. In 2019, we have some decrease in uh, forest cover for 100 hectares due to forest fire because in 2019 we had long dry season and thus we had a widespread forest fire in many different spots in Sumatra. So this is a more clear illustration about the licensing. So we have five village forests licensed by the government and we can see the graph. This is the graph for business as usual. This is the data that we received in the conservation forest before the people received the conservation, uh, uh, sorry, community forestry license. The deforestation rate is quite high. So uh, this is the target, but uh, in reality, we are exceeding the target. Only in 2019, we have we lost 100 hectares of land, but after that, uh, flat again. So 7,290 hectares, 1,955 have been utilized by the local people, has been uh, opened. And the remaining 5,336 hectare, hectares uh, remain uh, pristine for their effort to safeguard the forest we develop what we call community carbon but the framework is still uh, based on payment for environmental services we are not involved in other scheme because uh, there's still no regulation for this the support under this experiment for environmental services is more um, in a type of grant from traveling agency for individual from individual donors from fundraising uh, charity activities as well as uh, other sources and out of the 5300 hectares the carbon emission reduction per year is around 37,000 ton. And this 37,000 ton is offered under the uh, payment for environmental 
support scheme for payment based on the standard of carbon emission. For instance, a traveling um, uh, agency for their anniversary, uh, to celebrate their anniversary, they pay the local people uh, $6 per ton. But it is not for offset, but more for uh, grants. And the fund was then uh, used by the local community and the utilization of the fund uh, is decided by community consultation for social economic purposes because most of the people still have a low economic capacity. You can see this is the uh, circumcision ceremony which is like a local culture, local tradition, uh, local tradition uh, of circumcision ceremony. And it benefit poor communities, poor households in these five villages. Uh, this is my last slide because I was asked to discuss about the challenges. Well, indeed, based on our experience, it is still difficult to get support under community past project. We started in 2013, and the first financial support was only received in 2018. And then in 2019, but the activity was under hold since we are waiting for new regulation that can be implemented in the field. But the point is, carbon demand continue to increase. We can see that many stakeholders approaching us to discuss about this Bujang Raba scheme and in the future, considering the new uh, presidential regulation on carbon economic value, we have potential to build domestic market, especially uh, under this carbon economic valuation. But basically, we can still work under a PASS scheme, even though it is not too much, but if we can open the domestic market and we can accommodate uh, communities that safeguard for us, like Bojang Raba, I believe that the benefit that they can enjoy will be greater. Thank you, Ihin. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, for your presentation. That was very interesting. What Warsi has done in Bujang Raba, I think uh, it will trigger some questions for later uh, sessions. For the participants, if you have any question, please type it in the chat box. The presenter can uh, directly answer them as well. Let's go to the third presenter, Ibu Anna, please. Yeah, Ibu you, Anna, please. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Pa Ichin. Uh, sorry. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Ijin. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, for presentation. Uh, my name is Anna. No, I represent from uh, the Ministry of Environment and uh, Forestry, especially from Directorate of Forest Resource Inventory and Monitoring, that a part of a second uh, FRL team. Please allow me to share my presentation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in here, I will uh, present about the providing emission factor and activity data that use in uh, or we use in uh, the second FRL and as well as in the first FRL also. But I am focused on the improvement of our data. Yes, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, in Indonesia FRL, we know that. Uh, uh, the first FRL and the second FRL, uh, we use uh, the data, the activity data and emission factor 
from Ministry of Environment and Forestry that we know that uh, the most data is uh, primary data. Uh, so we, we measure uh, from the field for uh, emission factor and also we uh, generate the land cover and land cover change uh, based on the uh, satellite image. And um, the all data we uh, produce based on the stepwise approach that you know that the data is uh, have the uh, long period of data and the consistent and that based on the same source uh, data, uh, data source. And also we use combination of remote sensing and ground-based forest carbon inventory for uh, emission factor as well as uh, activity data. And here uh, I will focusing on the data needs and preference related with the activity data and emission factor. And yeah, we uh, also based uh, in, we produce the data uh, we use the TSCC principle that is transparent, accurate, uh, comparable, completeness, and consistency. That uh, you know that our data is uh, uh, have the long data, uh, consistent based on the same of uh, data source, and also our data can be comparable also, uh, especially land cover with the uh, global platform like uh, Global Forest Watch, and also we still. Uh, always uh, improve on the, our accuracy uh, data. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, the data of uh, FRL, as you know, that uh, actually uh, divide two data, uh, emission factor and the activity data. That the emission factor we conduct from uh, terrestrial inventory uh, and we use uh, systematic sampling and uh, this, this, uh, this system actually also uh, initial by uh, the FIO project uh, in uh, 1980. And also we use uh, allometric modeling to calculate uh, or to convert uh, from biomass uh, to uh, the carbon stock. And in the second FREL, we also increase the number of uh, mangrove sample plots uh, since compared that the first FREL we don't have enough sample uh, to calculate the uh, uh, mangrove uh, emission factor from mangrove. And also we improve the accuracy of uh, above ground biomass uh, using allometric uh, from Manuri. Uh, this is uh, the allometric is uh, represent this uh, uh, Indonesian condition uh, compared to uh, Safe, but we still use Safe also. And also now we still working to redesign the sample plot uh, with, uh, uh, with FIO project also, and still ongoing. I think uh, Pak Adam also in here and we working with uh, Pak Adam also. Uh, and this data, also we have uh, activity data. Activity data we produce from the non-terrestrial inventory that uh, we use Landsat. Uh, to cover the national uh, land cover. And uh, as uh, Pak Solihin uh, said before, uh, in this, this uh, before season, that uh, we not only in the second FL, we not only calculate uh, the accuracy of land cover class, but we also uh, develop the uncertainty analysis based on the Olofsson uh, method. And also, we use the combination of uh, automatic image processing and uh, visual. Yes, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is also this slide. Uh, you can uh, uh, read in here that uh, we have uh, improvement to support result of first uh, FRL based on the technical assessment that uh, we have five uh, five part of uh, to improve uh, the data from activity data which uh, like the automatic image processing techniques could be introduced and this is also we we do in uh, the second FRL and also uh, like improve accuracy and consistency in satellite image interpretation uh, we use uh, using a time directly to compare methods and also uh, uh, and also 
the forest emission factor, like I said before, uh, we improve the NFI and refine the site emission factor. Like we also add the sample plot of, of uh, the uh, mangrove. And from peatland uh, emission factor, we also have uh, like who work to improve the data and as well as peatland fire emission. So in the second April, we improve uh, the method uh, to produce the uh, burn scar uh, map that can we use uh, to calculate the uh, peatland fire in the second FL. And also uh, we uh, improve related with the red plus activities, not only deforestation and forest degradation, but we also estimate the uh, like the reforestation or the enhanced carbon stock. Yes, go ahead. Rimbana, satu menit bisa? Oke, okay, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, okay. maybe, ya. Yeah. Sorry, please. Ya, ya, ya. Yes, this is uh, like I said before that this is the improvement on the second April. Like oh, we calculate the deforestation, forest degradation, and enhanced forest carbon stock, and also the accuracy and uncertainty of land cover change. So, so just not only the accuracy of land cover, so we also use combined visual interpretation method uh, with change data detection and also uh, forest monitoring with base and emission factor. Yes, like I said before that we add the sample from mangrove then the burn scar, we use the generate base on the combination of satellite data, hotspot and field data. Uh, yes, uh, please go ahead. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is the our improvement. Uh, maybe you can uh, read also the slide after this uh, uh, event. So uh, we use method well, well mapping, uh, well mapping, still visual interpretation, but we combine uh, with the automatic data, and also we calculate the accuracy of land cover map and also uncertainty and lack of uh, land cover change. And the uncertainty of land cover change, we then with uh, the uncertainty of, uh, which we know, the uncertainty of deforestation from F FCPF, by UCF, and also second April, have the uh, uncertainty is less than uh, 15%. I think is a uh, good, but uh, and so. Uh, but we have challenge for a degradation and also uh, from uh, reforestation. Yes, please. Go ahead. This is the method for burn scar map. Uh, like I said, uh, the first April is important thing that the first April we just uh, use the like assumption of grid method but in here we combine uh, from data from satellite and also uh, hotspot and data from fleet so i think the accuracy is also uh, more than 85 percent yes uh, please i think one slide again yeah this is the message that the data april were generated from primary data and completely by other source or secondary data the secondary data uh, secondary data such as journal or published paper and also the use of primary data, uh, primary data are related to the relationship of scientific approach with operational approach, the estimation um, or measurement of emission factor and activity data use were done based on the scientific roles on operational activities. Data were generated based on the stepwise approach, meaning there are some improvement and serious effort on data and methods, but uh, and one thing, uh, one important thing is that all data, uh, the data is processed well or reviewed internationally and scientifically, and also the primary data is pure till we generate based on or use a budget uh, of uh, the uh, government. Thank you, Pak Ichin. Thank you, Mbak Ana. Uh, yeah, that is the last. Uh resource persons uh, the last one is related with the emission factor and activity data um, but Sita, do we have any time uh, for the time for discussions um maybe brief answer will be help okay. us to yeah to okay, maybe uh, i invite one one uh, questions Otherwise, maybe no one. 
Yeah, maybe I have a uh, questions. Uh, maybe I just summarize the question for the participants. So uh, questions to uh, Pak Joko, uh, Bahasa Indonesia aja Pak. Uh, tadi mungkin terkait juga dengan yang disampaikan oleh... Uh, which is related to uh, Rudy's uh, question or presentation. How people uh, at the local level can also benefit from carbon uh, trading. BPDLH agar dana ini bisa. Is there any additional steps uh, needed so that this fund can be dispersed to the local people? Atau Mbak Nia, maybe Mbak Nia. Pak Joko uh, or Bu Nia. Deputy Director. Ya, Pak izin. Bapak, hey, Bapak. ada meeting yeah. lain ya? Pak Joko uh, has to attend another meeting. So I will try to answer in Indonesian. So basically for... Uh, the, the direct, my director already mentioned about some initial fund. Uh, in this case, I think uh, it is more appropriate to discuss about uh, RDD Plus uh, fund. So there are two ways to access this fund. In the presentation, we have a fund for uh, incentive NFT. And this will be dispersed by our agency using call for pro proposal. But so far, we are still working to enabling uh, for enabling activity at the national level. And for provinces that already have Red Plus uh, working group, they have to use this provincial uh, channel. So the program has to use provincial approach with multi-stakeholders involvement. While for provinces that do not have a RAT Plus working group, they can directly approach our agency. But with the endorsement from the local government, provincial government, because uh, later we are going to see what we're going to see uh, is their contribution to the national frail. That's why uh, it is very important for them to also involve the provincial government. Thank you, Bania. Bania is the director for funding, for fundraising, director for fundraising. Yes, I'm very sorry. Our time is very limited. Uh, the organizing committee uh, asked me to stop, so we have to also stop our discussion session today. Let's give a round of applause to all of our presenters. Greetings.